Welcome everyone, Farmer Cop here. This is going to be a guide to the production facilities, the greenhouses. So if this is what you're looking for, um, we're going to go ahead and just kind of jump into it here. So first off, the first step in getting the greenhouses to work as well, you got to purchase them. Um, as far as I know, there's not any place anywhere on the map anywhere. So the only way to get them is if you go in the store, go down here, go to the construction mode, and then go over to production, greenhouses, then you have a small, medium, and large one. So we have a small one out here, a medium one, and a large one out here. You can rotate them smoothly by doing this, holding down the right mouse button. But yeah, you just got to place them. Now, if you wanted to, let's say I place this guy over here and I didn't want it, I can hit the demolish button and I can remove them um, fairly easily by just doing that. So you can remove them if you don't want to. Now, a couple other things to note in here that you can add on. If you go over to building, under containers, down here, there's a water purchase point which i have placed out here you may want that since water is the input for these guys you can get free water from going to a body of water on the map however if you wanted to do that but if you wanted it close this is an easy way to do that under silo extensions down at the very end we have a supplementary water tank this will add a 5,000 liter capacity to whatever greenhouse it's nearest to and again you can buy um, and sell these guys out here so you can place them they have to be placed you can't just place them anywhere theoretically of course it's gonna let me overlap of course it's gonna let me do kind of wherever i want there we go Southern watering must place near greenhouses cf base i mean you have a huge range uh but you can you just want to place them near the greenhouses to be able to add a little bit to um, their water tank capacity so just a couple things to note in there now the second thing we want to take a look at is the productions menu there are a couple things to look at as far as this goes so there's two ways to access it the first one is hitting escape on pc going down here to your productions menu in here and then you can see we have our greenhouses down here these are all of our greenhouses. We have small, medium, and large. Now, let's say you had multiple greenhouses or multiple large or medium or small greenhouses. You can come up to the greenhouse, left click to open the door here. We'll get out of the way. Come in here to this wrench. And then if we open up the help menu upper left-hand corner, it says R to manage production plant or production point. It'll take you in here and it'll, it'll highlight the one you're working on. So if we went over to the medium one, we can run over here real quick. We'll go inside the medium one here. If we went up to this, it will take me down to the medium one and highlight whatever one I'm on. So those are the two ways to kind of access um, the productions menu there. Now, if we do go up to it here on the bottom right-hand corner, it'll give you kind of a list of the active productions and what's going on. But let's go ahead and talk about that productions menu. So um, in here, we will start uh, down here at the small greenhouse and work our way up here. So uh, the small greenhouse. So down here, first off, you have the uh, activate or deactivate option here. So if I deactivate it, it's not gonna produce anything. It says inactive. And now if I activate it, right now it says running, but it's not gonna produce anything because materials are missing, it needs water. So if we go ahead and we deactivate all of these guys, and I'm actually just gonna go through and deactivate um, all of them real quick. There we go, back down here. So that's the activate deactivate function to turn it on or off. Now in the center menu here, um, we have cycles per hour. So cycles per hour, it says two right here. That means it's gonna do this production, this recipe twice every hour. So that means every hour it's gonna take 16 liters of water and produce 16 liters of tomatoes. And it's gonna do that twice every hour. So 32, 32 basically is what it's gonna do. So that's what the cycles per hour mean. Now the cost per hour, that's how much this is gonna bill you per hour. Now it's $0 for the greenhouses, so you don't have to worry about it too much. Um, now if we go over here to building storage, this is kind of going to give you an overview of what you have going on. So first off, uh, input, the only input here is water. And then you're going to either have your outputs as tomatoes, lettuce, and strawberries. This will show you how many liters of waters you have in here. And this will show you how many liters of tomatoes, lettuce, and strawberry you have in here. Now, the last thing we need to talk about in here is the um, output mode. So right now, they're all set to storing. So I can hit this change output down here in the bottom left-hand corner to selling and distributing and I can go back to storing. So we'll talk about what all those mean here in just a second. Um, so let's go through the other warehouses or the other greenhouses here and talk about their recipe. So we'll just work through our recipes here. So um, on the small one, uh, 16 liters of water for 16 liters of tomato, 16 liters of water for five liters of lettuce, and 16 liters of water for 32 liters of strawberries. On the medium, 28 liters for 28 for tomatoes, 28 to 14 for lettuce, 28 to 56 for strawberries. On the large, 64 to 64 for tomatoes, 64 to 32 for lettuce, 64 to 128 for strawberries. So um, that is your ratios as far as all of this goes. So that is exactly what you can do with all of them um, is get them produced in there uh, doing that. Now you notice that um, we do have the ability to activate all of these. So um, what I would encourage you to do is uh, kind of determine what you need. So if you just need tomatoes, well, just have tomatoes turned on. If you just need lettuce, have lettuce turned on. Just need strawberries, have strawberries turned on. Now let's say you own this large one or any of these guys, because you can have them all produce multiple uh, products at one time. Let's say you needed, well, tomatoes and strawberries. Well, leave the lettuce off and then just activate 
the two that you want it to produce with. Now I will note this, if you have uh, more than one activated, so for example, if I just had tomatoes activated, it will do this twice an hour. It'll do 64 liters to 64. Now let's say I add lettuce and I activate lettuce. Now instead of doing this production and this production, it will do this production, but it'll cut it in half. So what it means is it's gonna do two cycles of half of this every hour, which I know is basically just one cycle an hour, but work with me here, it'll make more sense in a second. So basically what that means is for tomatoes, if you have both of these on, it will do 32 liters to 32 liters here twice an hour. So that's what you're gonna get there. And then for this, you're gonna do 32 liters to 16 liters twice an hour. Now, if we wanted strawberries as well, we wanted all three and we activated this one, now it's gonna divide this by three. So what this means is it's gonna take this recipe and divide it into thirds. So which means every hour it's gonna do a third of this recipe times two. So I know it gets a little more complicated, but if we do the math here, um, we're doing this recipe divided by three. So if we take the 64, we divide it by three, that's 21.3 repeating. Now, if we multiply that by two to get our two cycles per hour, we're essentially gonna do 42 liters of water per hour to get 42 liters of tomatoes per hour. So that's how the math essentially works. And all of these greenhouses work that same way. Um, and I have tested that. So we'll go ahead and turn all these off. Now, the first things first to get these guys working, we have to get some water there. So I have some water here in this trailer. So we're just gonna drive around and we're gonna get water placed to um, all of our greenhouses. I'm not gonna fill them all the way up or anything like that. We're just gonna get a little bit to get them going. So if I come here, I'm gonna place water in here. And I'm actually only gonna activate the medium and large one for now. Um, and the reason being, we only need that really for our kind of testing. The small one works the same. It's just a slower slower quantity or a smaller quantity that it's producing um, at that one there. So if I go over to here, I'll just dump the rest in here. Get that put into there and then our small one or excuse me our medium and our large greenhouses will have water so if we go into the menu here we can see water here in this one the large one also has water so large and medium both have water in it you can see the large one has a higher capacity medium one has this capacity here so there you go those are the capacities we have if we hop out of there we come over here the next thing we need to talk about is getting these guys actually running so um, for the large greenhouse just to show you and demonstrate this i'm going to activate the tomatoes and the lettuce. On the medium one, I'm gonna activate just the tomatoes here, just to show you the difference here. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna leave them on storing. So they're all on storing right now. These guys are all on storing. What storing means is that as soon as it gets a full pallet, which I believe is, it depends on the product, but for lettuce, it's 200 liters. For strawberries, it's 150. We'll take a look at tomatoes here in a second. It will spawn pallets out here in this checkered area until this checkered area is full. When that's full, it will continue storing them until its capacity is full before production actually stops. So that's how that's gonna work. Now that's how the storing's gonna work. So what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna fast forward some time until we get some pallets out here and then I'm gonna bring you guys back in. All right, so we have some pallets out and about. We got a couple of pallets of tomatoes out here. I actually turned this guy off just so it would stop. We didn't need a bunch of them. And then over here, I actually switched it um, to strawberries at one point as well. Turn the tomatoes off, switch over to strawberries so we could see pallets each. So tomato pallets, full pallets are 100 liters and you can lift these. Strawberry pallets are 150 liters, and again, you can lift these by hand. And lettuce pallets are 200 liters, and you can also lift these by hand. So um, there you go, that's how you get the pallets out. Now the next mode in there, um, we can go ahead and deactivate that, but if we had this guy activated um, and we wanted to sell these, um, we could change it to selling. So you can either pick up the pallets and sell them manually by bringing them to a sell point. So if we go in here and we go down to uh, tomatoes, you can bring them to one of these sell points um, and sell them manually, but if you were gonna have the actual greenhouse itself sell them automatically and what it will do this is how the selling process works it will look in here whenever it gets and it won't be a full pallet it'll just be whatever amount it decides to sell at it will look in here look for the highest price so in this case 1054 and it will deliver it to that location however it does charge you a 40 percent delivery fee so if i had a thousand liters of tomatoes and i sold them at the restaurant using this function it would only give me $632 because it charges a 40% delivery fee. So just be aware of that. Um, so I always recommend probably just going ahead and taking them there yourself. Um, and I have tested that. I haven't tested every production facility, but the production facilities I have tested with the selling mode, it's been a 40% fee. So if it's different for different ones, let me know down in the comments. But as far as I can tell, that is the fee that it's gonna charge you. So the final mode, if we go back into our productions menu here, if I change that to distributing, what is that gonna do? Well, um, distributing is going to take whatever product you're creating and it's gonna move it along to the next production facility. So in Farming Center 22, at least in base game, there's nowhere for lettuce or tomatoes to go. That's the end of the line for them. Once they're produced, you can sell them. That's what you can do with them. Strawberries you can use further on and you could take them to the bakery to help produce cakes. So if you had these two set to 
distributing, what they will do essentially is just hold on to the tomatoes until you switch the mode either to storing or selling, and then it'll store them or sell them from there. So if it's on distributing, it has nowhere to go, it just holds on to them until you decide to uh, have them sent somewhere. Strawberries, it'll do the same thing. It'll it'll hold on to them if you don't have anywhere for them to go. So right now, though they can go somewhere, it won't get rid of them because I don't own a facility that'll take them. But the moment I own a bakery, it'll start distributing them to the bakery. Now I have noticed that there hasn't really been a significant fee, if any fee at all, to have these guys delivered further on the process. So this is actually a very useful tool as far as what I can tell with my testing. So uh, just be aware about that. But uh, yeah, so what do you do with these products? Well, we know that with lettuce, tomatoes, and strawberries, you can sell them. And then we also know now that we talked about it, strawberries, you can move them along into a bakery and you can use them as one of the ingredients in a bakery to make cakes. Uh, the cakes also require sugar from the sugar mill, um, butter from the dairy, um, and eggs from your chicken. So just be aware of that. But there you go, guys. That is everything you need to know about greenhouses and Farming Simulator 22. If this video helped you out, please drop a like down below. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button up on the screen to join the Farmer Cop channel and turn on your notification bell so you don't miss any future videos I may post. This has been Farmer Cop. Thank you guys for coming and watching.